Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and automation in engineering. The impact of these technologies is undeniable, and they are reshaping the future of the industry as we know it. I'm thrilled to introduce to you Kash Prasad, co-founder and CEO of Inspect Mind AI, co-founder of ProStruct Engineering and CEO of Project Karma. With years of experience and a track record of remarkable achievements, Akash is the perfect guide to help us navigate the intricate landscape of AI and automation in engineering. I am your host, Nick Heim, and this is the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast. With that, let's jump into today's episode. It's now time for our conversation of the week with Akash Prasad. Kosh, thank you so much for joining the show. Welcome on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So AI, very large talking point in, in AEC right now. So we've got a lot of good content to cover today and we'll just get right into it. But Akash, we'll start with how you got started in the industry. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career journey? What led yeah. you to where you are and in the AEC industry today in the world of technology? You know, it's really interesting. I was like quite literally born into this intersection. So my dad's a civil engineer and his dad, and you know, my cousin and his brother, a lot of family that's in civil and structural. So seen a lot of engineering projects, site visits, field reports growing up. And my mom's actually a software engineer at a big tech company in Silicon Valley. So I was literally born into that intersection, grew up seeing a lot of construction and engineering, a lot of software and startups. Uh, my own education is actually in electrical engineering and computer science, but I always have this fascination and interest with the AAC industry. So this kind of um, intersection to combine AEC and like AI, computer science technology was just extremely natural for me and kind of like what I was naturally drawn to just because of how I grew up. Which is a match made in heaven, Akash, because a lot of the, let's say, either startups or software companies come into this industry without a lot of domain knowledge or expertise. But based on your upbringing and kind of where you've been, you've got the best of both worlds, it sounds like. Yeah, it's been like just really fascinating for me, even as a teenager, you know, watching my dad do engineering projects, like seeing him do site visits, write reports, all kinds of things. And, and then being able to kind of apply my computer science knowledge and, and see, you know, how, what are ways I could help him? And, you know, if I could help him, I could help a million other PEs like him. Gosh, and that's a great segue into our next question on reporting. How do you see AI and automation transforming traditional engineering construction workflows, particularly in terms of data collection and reporting? Just really streamlining things. I mean, I'll tell you what I've seen for 20 years growing up, you know, like, and this is, I think, very typical of not just my dad, but I think very representative of P, of PE, people that do site with field reports, inspections. I think typically, you know, the analog way is you go to the site, you know, you take some photos, maybe you jot down some notes, and then maybe two, three days later, you're back at the office and you're trying to remember everything you saw. And, and it's easy to forget which photo is from which part of the building. And then you're writing up this like multi-page report. And like, I've, I've seen that's how like so many engineers do it. What, you know, we can do with like AI and software applications is not only streamline the whole data collection, like when you're at the site, can you just capture all the information and make that so much easier where you can actually do it during your visit. You don't even have to spend a lot of time typing. You don't need a computer. You can do it on your phone. Just you know, take photos, just speak your notes into the app and you're done. And then I think what where AI takes that to the next level is being able to turn that data into a complete report. And I don't think I ever saw my dad enjoy the process of like writing a report. In fact, I think the genesis of Inspect Mind was one report that he sent me to proofread. And I was like, I bet we could do this with AI. And that was literally the genesis of Inspect Mind like a year back. And Akash, you've got it exactly right. I don't think many engineers enjoy that almost admin like process of just the grind of putting together reports, particularly if the data data is collected in analog fashion. Like I was brought up with a clipboard, paper, a pen, and a digital camera, and you'd go around and you'd take the picture, photo one, write write something about it, right? Exactly. And even to add to that, I think a lot of engineers, like they're 
you know, analytical people, like they like the structural analysis and the modeling and the numbers. And I think like writing is probably not why they got into engineering. Like maybe they would have gone into law or something if they liked writing, you know? So I think it's also like, doesn't quite play to the strengths. And so um, I think, you know, why bringing automation and AI to this workflow, it really allows engineers to focus on what they enjoy. I've seen so many engineers at site visits where they love sharing their knowledge. You know, they love knowing what to look for and being able to pull in their years and decades of experience and be able to provide like insights from their experience. So it's like the knowledge is really important to them, right? Like the consultation, the, you know, knowing what's the, the, the right advice to give or what's the thing to look for. Like, I think I see a lot of engineers, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, generally enjoy that aspect, but that's kind of like sharing their treasure trove knowledge. But when it comes to like, you know, the writing and kind of admin grunt work kind of stuff, like I, I usually don't see people enjoy that. And that's a perfect area to apply AI and automation and really free up that time. And, and in some cases, even, you know, be able to do it better. And I think that is pretty typical, Akash. And, you know, for anybody in the audience who doesn't do a lot of report writing, the the main driver behind report writing is communicating what you as an engineer are finding on site in plain terms that a client can understand. So although it may not be our favorite thing to do as engineers, it definitely is necessary. Yep. And Akash, let's, let's keep talking AI. So you hear about it in the news, right? Large language models, computer vision, right? A lot of this stuff that maybe people on AEC aren't as familiar with. What are the most critical features in AI-driven tools that you're going to need to be effective in the engineering and construction sectors? You know, there's, there's so many interesting applications of AI out there. Um, ultimately, you know, when I started my exploration of, okay, what are interesting things we could do with AI in the AC industry? I think a key kind of exercise early on was really understanding where the tech is and what it could do well and what it can't do well. Uh, you know, I know, I know there's like people trying to do all kinds of generative design things. I think, you know, it's not quite there yet to be able to produce like a useful design that's code compliant. You know, it's maybe good for like ideation and stuff, but maybe that's a little more on the art side versus the engineering side. Um, you know, there's, I think computer vision is developing um, the ability to, I think, over time, be able to take photos and maybe help auto detect certain issues. Like, yeah, it's already happening in, you know, healthcare with radiology. Could that be applied within the construction industry where, you know, you could look at defects and, and kind of try to, if you have enough data and training done, uh, try to detect uh, what the underlying issues would be and assist the engineer or inspector, I think there's some cool applications there. But if I look at, you know, large language models today, I mean, what they're good at is writing, right? And then they're getting better at writing. Like, even if you look at like GPT generated emails and stuff that, you know, they, they keep getting better. Um, and so I think uh, technical writing is definitely something that large language models are like decent at, you know, uh, compared to many other kind of use cases. And, so that's kind of where we double down in terms of like leveraging those to be able to write these technical reports um, to be kind of a co-pilot. Uh, but yeah, the large language models, you know, vision models, computer vision, generative design, I think search is another thing. You know, OpenAI has the ability for you to like search a bunch of files and ask queries and find specific information kind of beyond like a control F kind of thing that you would do in, in like a PDF or Word doc, but really be able to do like a more kind of intelligent search. So yeah, there's definitely interesting tech being developed, you know, every, like it's developing like every week, every month, you know, there's new stuff coming out, but I think you have to really look at where can AI deliver tangible value today versus where is it more of like, you know, a, a future promise. Maybe it'll get there in 12 months or 18 months, but it's not there you know, today. So as you're thinking about where to apply AI, I think you have to really look at like, what can it actually do well today? And like, I think that's a good place to start. What advice would you give to professionals to prepare for these types of changes that you see coming? I think the, you know, the minimum anybody can do is just start getting familiar with some of the popular tools out there and, and just start 
um, playing around with those and see, you know, what's kind of low hanging fruit. How can they start applying it to some of their work? Um, I do think within AC industry, you know, the biggest barrier of any kind of technology or software, like even, you know, before AI, like has always been adoption. And so I think the key is, you know, for any software to be like really easy to learn and use and adopt. And I think AI is going to take that to the next level because there's so much that it can do autonomously that it doesn't like, it's different from like your clunky software of the past where you have to like go through a whole course to learn how to use this big company software, right? Um, I think with AI, we're going to increasingly see much simpler user interfaces where, you know, it's maybe it's just like, it's, you're just like telling it what you need to be done, right? As opposed to like, you know, taking a three month bootcamp to learn how to use the software. And that's, and that's really what is exciting about AI is because it just understands how we as humans, like, right, natural language processing, like, how do we as humans just speak? Um, yeah. whether it's formally or colloquially and it can just do what you need it to do, which is, I mean, super exciting because you don't need to be a rocket scientist to use it. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's, what's interesting about a lot of the AI tools versus other kinds of innovation in the past and in, in construction software. Like I think there's been a lot of tech in the past where like, you really have to like, there's a big barrier to just like just to learn and try it out and learn how to use it. And like, then you have to really think like, okay, do I want to make that investment? Like what's the upside? Is it high enough to invest this time to train? And I think that's where a lot of like construction software would fail to get adoption. Um, but I with you know, with AI, I think we're increasingly going to see the new world of interfaces where it's so much, you know, order of magnitude, 10 X easier to use, faster to use. And I think because of that, it's going to be a lot simpler, a lot more intuitive. And that might crack, the some adoption barriers that has kind of plagued construction tech in the past. That's my hope or hypothesis. And Akash, let's stay on that theme of adoption, right? So you've you've led a couple of successful companies to this point and are still in the process of doing so. What challenges have you faced trying to integrate new tech into traditional industries like AEC? So the way I've done that in the past is kind of more of like a tech enabled services company. And so the benefit of that model was, you know, as a tech enabled services company, we could incorporate tech versus needing necessarily our customers to incorporate tech. Um, and so just kind of that allows the customers to get the benefits of the technology, but without having to like worry about the technology. So that's how I've done it in the past. But, you know, with Inspect Mind, it's different, right? We're not a, we're not a services company. We are an AI application uh, for, the, for the professionals to use. But I think what's really interesting here is just how simple we've been able to make it where it really doesn't require like a ton of training or education for somebody to be able to just start using it, right? Download the app and just start doing a mock inspection and, and, uh, yeah, we've tried to make it like as intuitive as possible. So I think either way, I think it's always about just minimizing the friction. Like you want to just keep everything as frictionless and, and simple as possible. If whether that's the business model, whether that's, you know, the interfaces or the amount of education or onboarding required. I think if you take the North star of just reducing friction, I think that's usually a good North Star to have in terms of like, you know, building like software. And at Akash, the benefits, I think, to the the end users or the companies of the software and their clients, of course, are what a lot of our audience is interested in. Things such as saving time, cost reduction, and accuracy. Some of the benefits that we've heard AI can bring to us as professionals in the space. Can you talk a little bit about how that actually works in practice? Yeah. So, you know, the tool I have most experience with is, is our tool on SpecMind. And, you know, I think the best way to illustrate that is actually a, a, a case study of a, of a customer, right? So we have a, here's a, a early customer in Southern California. He's a structural engineer. 
he does these multifamily inspections. He might be looking at, you know, 80, 100 decks and balconies. And in the past, he would go spend two or three days doing that inspection. Then he would work with, you know, a technical writer for over a week to write up a multi hundred page report. Now he just captures all the information in our app during the inspection and the report's ready in minutes. And then he's just spending time review, edit, sign and stamp. And so what it's done for his business is it's freed up like majority of the time that goes into the report writing. And then he's able to just focus really on the actual inspections and the review and edit. And because of that, he's able to take on more jobs. So his profitability per job has gone up. His number of jobs he could do in a month has gone up. His revenue has gone up. His net income has gone up. You know, so it's it's kind of been a no-brainer for him in terms of helping him not just save time, but, you know, in business time is money, right? And uh, he's it's, it's helping him save time and save money, but also more importantly, I think, make more money, um, you know, with the same kind of team that he has. So... Uh, and at the same time, I think more importantly, you know, what he said is that the quality of the reports are actually better, you know, than the ones he used to have because the AI is able to learn from his past reports and actually generate equal or better, you know, quality of output. So it's kind of been a win across the board in terms of quality, time, cost, and just, you know, increased, increased his income at the end of the day pretty significantly. And Akash, if you could give kind of some final pieces of advice to engineers who are looking to integrate tools like InspectMine into their workflows, particularly those who are a little bit hesitant about AI-based solutions, what would you tell them? I think the best way is to just try it. You know, you don't lose anything by giving it a shot. I think that the the upside for the business is quite high. I mean, what if you could double your number of inspections every month and, you know, while improving your profit margin per project, right? It's kind of, you know, and quality and every accuracy and everything. And then the downside is, okay, you spent a little bit of time to try something out. Maybe, maybe it wasn't what you expected, or maybe it wasn't the right fit for you. So it's, you know, it's kind of uh, not much downside to try out new tools, but the upside, especially ones that can really help with your profitability and your, your growth and give you a competitive advantage in your market, you know, it's, the high upside and very little downside to, to try it. You know, if at the end of the day, um, if you don't like a tool, you don't have to continue using it. And it's really, you know, that's the job of the the maker of the tool to make it so good that you're going to continue using it. But, you know, if, if you, you didn't like it, then, okay, maybe you burned a little bit of time, but you learned something new as well. So there's really nothing to lose. Which sounds like a, a win-win to me. But Akash, thank you so much for joining us today. If the audience has more questions about you, your background, your previous ventures, or what you're working on now, which is Inspect Mind, how can they connect with you? You can reach out on LinkedIn. I'm pretty open on LinkedIn in terms of connections or message requests. Um, There's my email as well, akash, A-A-K-A-S-H, at inspectmind.ai. I give you a I'd probably give you my cell number, 650-793-4151. Call me, text me, email me, LinkedIn me, happy to chat anytime. I was born into this intersection, love it, I'm passionate about it, happy to chat anytime. Beautiful and well said, Akash. So for anyone who is listening but didn't have a pen handy, you'll be able to find all of Akash's contact info and some of the things that we mentioned in the show notes uh, are in the show in the show notes later including um, a link to inspect minds website but again akash thank you so much for taking the time to join us today yeah thanks for having me Nick. absolutely till next time all right thank you please remember you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com there you will find a summary of key points discussed in today's episode as well as links to any of the resources websites or books mentioned during this episode until next time i wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors thank you